Good morning, everyone. On this Thursday, within the octave of Christmas, we celebrate the feast of the Holy Innocents, the babies in Bethlehem, the boys under the age of two who were slaughtered by the wrath of King Herod in his jealousy at the possibility that there would be a child who would overthrow his kingdom. We'll talk about that in the homily today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we pause to call to mind our sins, asking the Lord for pardon and peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away. <coughs> Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whom the holy innocents confessed and proclaimed on this day, not by speaking, but by dying, grant, we pray, that the faith in you, which we confess with our lips, may also speak through the manner of our life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his Son, Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The word of the Lord. The response, our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their fury was aflamed against us. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, the torrent would have swept over us, 
over us and then would have swept the raging waters. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Alleluia, Alleluia. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. And said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose, took the child and his mother by night, and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled out of Egypt. I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. The voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled since they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. So in this octave, Christmas, the the first day afterwards is the martyrdom of Stephen. And today we have the martyrdom of the nameless baby boys killed because of the terrible wrath that was in King Herod. So afraid of losing his throne, so afraid of being overtaken that he would just blindly have all of these baby boys wiped out in order to get the one who is prophesied to be the new king. This contrast between the glory and grandeur of Christmas, where we celebrate the birth of a child, and here we recall the death of innocent babies. What a stark contrast in Christmas. Begs the question, why do the innocent suffer? It's a question that comes up in every generation, every era. Why do good people who've done nothing wrong have to be terribly tortured, suffer, go through pain, and die. Why? Why do the innocent suffer? We know that God does not will suffering, but he permits it. And in the face of this kind of terrible tragedy that we hear, we we can just think about in our own era, but frankly in any era, that the same question would come up again and again, why, O Lord, why did these babies have to die? At the heart of the mystery of evil, and this is evil, we understand that we have the freedom to choose how we wish to live our life. We have freedom to act in a way that is good, holy, true, though we can also be destructive. We can fall into all sorts of pits and traps that take so much from us and give nothing back. Herod chose out of a desire for power, out of whatever focus he had on his life at the complete exclusion of others, to send the order to kill them. Call it greed, call it power, call it fear. But his choice has led to this destruction. And today we have to recall that the reason why the Messiah came is that all of us have the capacity to do great harm, and at times we have 
and it's led to sin. That all of us, if left unchecked, can be in a hot mess that can cause all sorts of terrible things to happen, pain to happen, innocent people around us to suffer because of our own sinfulness. And so today we, we acknowledge that the reason why we put this feast right here in the heart of the joy of Christmas is to remind us why the Savior came in the first place, to bring hope to the darkness that we see, we acknowledge, we recognize, we do not turn a blind eye, but rather we look at when these tragedies come to recognize our own need for healing and then to go out into the world and say, Lord, how can I, in my small way, help those in their suffering? How can I, in my limited means, alleviate someone else's pain? To turn a blind eye to the suffering of the innocent, that, that limits us. We are diminished. But the minute and moment we have the courage to see honestly the pain that people carry, our hearts can expand, not on our own, but because God's love will fill it. And through us, God will work if we are open to seeing the pain and then saying, Lord, how can I help in my way? Lord, how can you work through me today? These babies are a testament to the Christ child. They remind us how precious is faith, how precious is the gift of the Son of God who came to break the cycle and bring us into right relationship with God and one another. May the sacrifices of these babies inspire us to make an offering of our life, to share our lives with an openness to God's grace and a willingness to see clearly the pain that is around us and respond whenever possible. God bless you all. We pray this day in our world for the innocent who suffer, for those who are persecuted unjustly, unfairly, because of human weakness, sin, and evil that in some small way their pain might be alleviated, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the church, that we will respond to that pain, that we will strive to be open to God's grace working in our lives, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who struggle in this Christmas season with pain on the inside, fear, depression, anxiety, grief, and loss. For their healing from the inside out with God's help and grace, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, Norman Spindler, we pray to the Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for us, religious and deacons, obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your devoted servants, and purify us as we faithfully serve these, your mysteries, by which you grant justification even to those who lack understanding. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. <coughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Grant, O Lord, abundant salvation to your faithful as they receive your holy gifts on the feast day of these, your saints, who, though still unable to profess your Son in speech, were crowned with heavenly grace on account of his birth, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A couple of announcements. There will be no adoration of the Blessed Sacrament today here in the cathedral. For those of you online, to continue to invite people to go on YouTube to Superior Catholics, our YouTube channel here for the cathedral, and please hit subscribe. We're looking to hit a thousand subscriptions. <coughs> In doing so, it allows us a far greater range of possibilities to use YouTube for our online services from here at the cathedral and for the rosary. In doing so, it simplifies for people. There's no cost, there's no charge for subscribing to our Superior Catholics YouTube channel. What it does do though is it makes it easier for us to really get the message out, especially for people who are looking for an option that's not Facebook. This is a way to allow us to do that much more effectively. Go to YouTube, go to Superior Catholics, hit subscribe. And for those who like a podcast, mine is Catholic inspiration. Go to any podcast uh, source and you'll find it there. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a great day.